The first thing I want to do is remove the wheel, 21 millimeter socket, take off all five of your lug nuts. And now remove the wheel. Now with the 10 millimeter, I want to loosen up the two slider pin bolts, which bolt the caliper onto the axle here. Um, there's, no, there's no bracket on this one. So 10 millimeter socket, break these free, and then we'll remove them all the way. Take these out, set them aside, inspect them. If they're rotted or in bad condition, don't reuse them. Obviously you need to replace them. These are good though. Now use a pry bar, go from the top, flip the caliper over, take it off. I want to take off the rotor next in order to help clean up the uh, anti-rattle clips where they sit. Okay, it looks like my parking brake needs to be de-adjusted because it won't let go of the shoes. So let me show you how to do that. At the bottom right here, you'll see this little cap, which if you remove it, it gives you an access hole to the adjuster for the parking brake shoes. Sometimes you might need a little pry bar to, or screwdriver to pop this out. Don't break it because you definitely want to reuse this, otherwise water gets in there and then you get rust on your parking brake shoes. But pop this off, there we go. And right behind here, you'll see this little star adjuster wheel. You can twist this and what this will do is it'll contract the shoes and it will release the rotor. Hopefully it's not seized up. Mine is a little rusty, so we'll definitely have to clean this one up and uh, lubricate it, but it spins, so that's good. Uh, the direction that you need to turn it in will depend by uh, application. Sometimes you have to twist it down, sometimes you have to twist it up, and also depending on how it was installed last. Looks like for me, twisting it down releases the rotor. Okay, that's perfect. Now I can get the rotor off of here. I don't want to breathe in any of this brake dust that's stuck in here, so I'm going to take some brake parts cleaner. I'm going to spray down this whole parking brake shoe area and get rid of any dust that might be floating around in here. That way, as I work, I don't breathe it in. And also, this helps clean it all up. Cleaning this up, this one's not too bad, but I do want to remove the surface rust here, and I'm going to use a sanding disc. At this point, you could use a wire brush, but it would take a little bit longer than a sanding disc. Don't take off too much material, though. This is your axle shaft. <laughs> In between the lug studs here, I'm going to use a wire brush. Clean it up with brake parts cleaner. Now to remove and replace these parking brake shoes, I'm going to go down here where the little spring clip is, and I'm gonna remove this clip. You can do this multiple different ways. I'm gonna use a pry bar, press in on this, twist, and this will turn the pin to where it'll line up with that slot. Once it does, it'll just release. And if you don't have new hardware, be gentle with this so you can reuse it. If it's not rotted or bent or damaged or whatever, it's totally fine to reuse. push the adjuster out of the way. This will create some slack on this lower spring and release it for you. Take this adjuster out and save it. We're gonna clean this up because it's a little rusty. Now you wanna take this shoe, flip it up sideways and just release this top spring from it. Set this aside. Now we have to do the same to this side. So remove this little spring clip that locks everything in. You can use some needle on those pliers or locking pliers. Grab on to the uh, pin and just turn it out that way. Okay, take this out. That bottom spring just fell out. I'm gonna grab it and save it. This one looks like it's in good condition still. Might have a little surface rust and brake dust on it, but it's totally reusable. Pull this shoe up and out. Again, also save this top spring. This one's also just fine, reusable. I'm gonna pull my two pins out so I can inspect them. These look fine, a little bit of surface rust, but also reusable. One last thing that we have here that I wanna remove and lubricate because it's kind of frozen up is this parking brake lever. 
So I'm gonna pull it to the side like this and out, push this boot back in, and I'm gonna take this over to my workbench, soak it in some rust penetrant, because these two actually need to pivot on each other like that. So obviously you wanna free that up, otherwise your parking brake will not operate. So I soaked this in some penetrating fluid and I used a hammer and just lightly tapped it back and forth while this was in a vise like this. It really did not take much to loosen it up. It was not very frozen at all. And this does actually come apart. It's two pieces. So if you just wiggle it, yours should separate. Remember which direction it goes. It's important. Otherwise, uh, it won't really fit or operate properly. So I'm going to take this apart, take it to my wire wheel, and clean up all the rust on it because I don't want it going back like this. It'll just rust back together again. A couple minutes on the wire wheel, and it looks nice and clean now. And I took a little bit of sandpaper, shoved it through this little hole, and tried to sand the inside of it. It operates nice and smoothly. However, we do have to grease it up because now it's bare metal and it will rust again if we don't. I don't want to grease the whole thing up, obviously, but I do want to grease up the pin here that it pivots on. So take a small amount of brake grease, put it on here, and then take this piece, slide it over, work the grease in here. I'm going to put a little bit on here too. Probably just take the excess from over here. There we go. That way it's covered on all sides, right here where it pivots, and this is good to uh, reinstall. One last thing that I want to clean up is this adjuster. These threads are here, look perfect. I'm not going to do anything to them, but I will take this little star wheel off, unthread it, and I'll clean up these threads right here so I can put some grease on them. That way they're not rusty anymore. I'm going to bring this over to my wire wheel and I'll show you how much grease to put on here. That's nice and clean now. I'm going to apply a little bit of grease. If you put too much, this adjuster wheel will just wipe it all off, so there's no way to actually overdo it. And once I coat the threads, I'm just going to drive this wheel all the way to one side, apply grease to the rest of the threads, and then push it back to the other side a little bit to work the grease into the threads. Okay, that's bottomed out this way. I'm going to wipe off any excess grease, apply it to this side over here. On this side, you can put a little more. The wheel will most likely not make it all the way back here because there's so much adjustment. If it makes it all the way back here, well, your shoes are probably completely gone at that point. But just put a little bit, that way it has some reserve of grease in here if it, it needs to uh, you know, stay lubricated. Slide on this piece all the way. As you can see, this is bottomed out right here, but the threads don't completely get covered. So I'm just gonna bring this adjuster to where it bottoms out up against the non-threaded piece. I also like to apply a very small amount of grease right here and right here where the shoes actually make contact with this adjuster. This will help prevent any uh, squeaking noises when you apply the brakes if uh, things get a little rusty and dry. Simply slide it through this boot here. Oops, make sure it doesn't come apart. And as you push it through, it's basically gonna wanna fall right into place on the parking brake cable. I'll show you what that looks like from the back side in a second, but I wanna show you what it looks like on this side so you know how far to actually push it in. This is what it looks like from the back side. As I pushed it, it literally just fell right into place on the e-brake cable. And this is how it should look from the front side once you're done. Nice and flush with the backing plate. And if you think about it as a bird, it should be facing that way, kinda of looks like one. So on the driver's side, it should be facing the front of the vehicle. Next, I wanna clean off the mounting areas where the shoes actually touch. There's one right here, one right here, and uh, this right here, but we already cleaned that up. Also, right in here, it's gonna take a wire brush, gently sand it down so we can add some grease to the surface here. Don't scrub off the whole backing plate. That's pointless, and it'll take the paint off, actually, and then it'll rust. Scrub the areas where the shoes actually make contact. Add a thin layer of grease so the shoes don't squeak. I'm going to also add some right up here and up there as well as down here and do the same to the other side. Now take your spring, slide it through this shoe over here, put the shoe in place, make sure that at the top both of these cutouts line up with both the uh, axle here as well as the adjuster or the lever for the parking brake. Now I'm going to secure this shoe with the pin that goes through it. Slide the pin through the back side just like this. I'm holding the pin from the back side, push the spring in, and I have to twist it, so I'm going to grab my pliers, grab onto it, 
twist it sideways, set everything into place now. There we go. Grab your other side shoe, hook the spring on it, pull it over and slide it on over here where it needs to sit. At the top, it should look something like this. The main cutout down there sits on this uh, thicker piece down here, and then the smaller cutout will sit right like that on the adjuster. Now I'm gonna connect the two shoes at the bottom while this one's still loose, and it'll be a lot easier. So hook the spring on to the two slots, and then put the adjuster in. It went this way with the star wheel facing towards the front of the car. Honestly, it doesn't really matter how you put it on as long as it's on. The only difference it's gonna make is which way you spin it to adjust and de-adjust. So. Oops, too far. There we go. So everything is set into place here. Now we have to mount this shoe onto the backing plate. So grab the pin, push it through, get the little spring retainer. Mine's not the strongest spring in the world anymore, so it's still reusable, like I said, but it means I can easily compress it. There we go. Now our shoes are secured. Everything is installed properly, correctly lubricated. So now we have to get the rotor on and adjust the parking brake shoes. However, before we do that, let's put some anti-seize on the hub. Next, I wanna put some anti-seize all over this hub here where we cleaned up, that way it doesn't rust again, or at least prevents most of the rust. And I'm just gonna put a thin layer on. If you have the spray anti-seize, not the brushed kind, be careful not to get it on your parking brake shoes. You don't wanna contaminate them. If you do, uh, you'd wanna use some brake parts cleaner and clean them off nicely. I'm gonna also focus on the center area right here where the rotor actually sits. A lot of times if it will freeze, it'll actually freeze on right at that ring, right in the middle. So I'm gonna also coat the rest of the surface and you don't wanna use too much either because if you use too much, it'll squish, come out, get on the braking surface or on the uh, surface for the parking brake shoes, and then you have issues. So try not to use too much, nice thin layer will do the trick. Slide on your rotor. If it doesn't fit, the parking brake shoes most likely shifted. So just center them up a little bit. In order to properly adjust the parking brake shoes, I'm gonna put two lug nuts on and bottom them out. Just make them snug so the rotor can sit flush up against the axle here. This will get you the most accurate uh, tightness of the parking brake shoes. And before I go to do anything else, I'm gonna come right back here with a little pry bar and I'm gonna pull on the parking brake lever, just like that. What this is gonna do is it's gonna move the shoes around and center them up. Otherwise, if they're not centered, one side might be touching before the other and you'll get an inaccurate um, measurement of how tight how far out you should adjust them. So now that that's done, let's spin these and it'll be hard to tell, um, especially because the other wheel is gonna wanna spin and I'm in neutral, but you still have to overcome the force of the drivetrain. And as you can see, you can have a little bit of slop in the differential and it'll um, move a little bit, but you really need to turn it and listen for it. What you wanna do on parking brake shoes like this is you want to hear them just barely touch. You don't want them to drag at all, not like drum brakes. You just want them to just barely touch and that's how you know that it's properly adjusted. I can hear something very little, so I'm gonna turn the adjuster uh, to expand the shoes a little bit and hopefully that does the trick for me. Another thing you can do is go to the other side, disassemble it just so that I can have noise only coming from here. I don't wanna confuse any dragging noise with uh, noise coming from the other side. All right, so I have the other side apart, the rotor's off. I'm gonna spin this and just listen for it. See how you can hear them touch at all times. Now keep in mind, the adjuster is completely de-adjusted. It's bottomed out, you cannot de-adjust them anymore 
and the shoes are slightly making contact with the rotor. Another way to test this is I'm going to pull on the e-brake lever back here while I spin and the rotor should stop turning. Okay, right there, parking brake is being applied. So everything is just fine. That's exactly how you want it to be. Um, turns out I didn't have to do any adjustments, so that's perfect. Let's take these lug nuts off and continue. Once you're happy with your adjustment for the parking brake, don't forget to put this little cap back on here. I put a little bit of grease on it just so it can seal up properly. Push it in all the way. There we go. Now you can take your caliper, slide it on the bottom here first, and then push it over, line it up with the top. Now with everything lined up, let's put the two caliper bolts back in and we'll tighten them, bottom them out, and then torque them to 20 foot-pounds. Okay, 20 foot-pounds. Let's get the wheel on. Start on all five of your lug nuts, if you have five, and then torque them to 150 foot-pounds. If you have seven, start all seven, and then torque them to 100 foot-pounds. Okay, take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.